Yo, that bitch Taharka Bay just came up here to the museum. Shout out to the security up here. Shout out to this brother here. I just slapped the shit out of Taharka Bay. All right? Did you see me slap the shit out of him? <laughs> I just slapped the shit out of Taharka Bay and ran him the fuck up out of here. Not today, okay. not tomorrow, that fall, I, fall not ever. <laughs> you'll learn about our music, music that carried us through dark times, happy times, and the best of times. What I love is that when you walk in here, you see the beautiful pictures of James Brown, Michael Jackson, Prince, and, and our queen. We got a queen now that's representing big time, Beyonce. And then what's even more special, is that we ain't gonna forget about hip hop either, okay? We ain't gonna forget about hip hop that now has become everything to everybody. FBA! Got a nice statue and a salute to Nipsey. Right. That's just I, should. I love how you guys did that with the neon and, and how modern that is. You know, y'all, this, this is what this is about. Most of the time for y'all to learn about our history, I go all the way to DC to the African-American History Museum, which I'm gonna tell you is an amazing experience. If you go, it's five levels yep. of our history that will move you, that hats off to Oprah Winfrey, that she cared about the community to say, no, y'all not gonna forget about us. If I have to build it from the ground up, I will. So look at you here, 
you know, in LA, doing doing the same thing. Doing the same thing. Y'all have to yes, yes, yes. We deserve more than just a month. Do you understand what I'm saying? We deserve more than just one month. Yeah, a whole year, but that's in the short month of that. But that's right. All right. That's all right. And then listen, then we have our amazing donors. And, and, and I met this beautiful sister right here. Stand up, sister. Come on, stand up. Yes, sister Renee. Sister Renee. Come on, stand up. Come on, sister Renee. I didn't know who she was. We was trying to do a, 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 a video, and I was like, "Girl, could you stop photobombing me?" She was like, "I'm on this wall over here, child." <laughs> I just want to give you your props. You told me about how you have your wonderful thing that's going down in Long Beach, correct? Yes. All right. This is what this is about. It's us. Keeping our communities alive and well. That's a chase of Africa and generation. While she's here, so another round of applause for Sarah Jones. Any last words? I just want to say, hey, call Car Shield before your car breaks down. <laughs> Hey y'all, don't get mad. He crack a lack in this shit. He macking and smacking and shit, okay? Alright, he macking, man. Straight macking, whatever the fuck the name of that shit was. <laughs> whatever the name of that shit he was, he put out, man. You know? Oh, man. This is what you get when you turn the skillet up under a poverty pimp and shit, okay? Yeah, this is what happens when you turn that fire up under that motherfucking skillet and shit, okay? Uh, I ain't here to make no fucking excuses and shit. I'm here to be, well, I'm here to be a bull in a china shop and shit, okay? All right? And this is a, well, you, this is your Hidden History Museum. All right? A retail cost of $1,865,000, okay? All right? Now, before I trip and shit, <laughs> I want to tell you why I did what I did and shit, you know, because I think, you know, like those old, like those Christopher Nolan Batman movies and shit, like one of those movies, they said sometimes people deserve to, you know, people deserve to get something, you know, good people deserve, you know, to have their faith rewarded and shit. Okay. And be that as it may, that's, that's my ideology when it comes to the community and community and shit. That's my ideology and shit. Okay. All right. Sometimes good good people deserve to have their faith rewarded and shit. Okay. Now I want to tell you why why I'm gonna trip. I want to tell you why I'm gonna trip. Okay. All right. And this is the reason I'm gonna trip. Okay. Uh, a couple years ago, Tariq Tariq Nashi was banned from traveling to the UK. You know that's what he told us. Okay. He told us that. Okay. But he was banned. From traveling to the UK, okay. I'm not disputing that and shit, okay. And uh, he he made some movies and they they were high profile on Amazon and shit, okay. They were high profile, all right. Made made some change there, and so he had a high profile as a uh, you know with the government supposedly and shit, you know where they were watching him and trying to pull a trick bag on him and shit and sending police to his home and doing all this shit, you know, okay, all right. So, you know, if you knew you had that kind of a high profile, you know, that the minority majority saw you in the negative, why would you publicly announce a project that you were trying to put together of this magnitude? Why would you publicly, why would you publicly announce that, okay? And I'm going to tell you what I think and shit, my feelings about it is, is that he did that so that he could have plausible deniability when it fucking failed, Okay. When it failed, this shit. But 
people turned the heat up under his ass and shit. And I went into, you know, wait and see mode. I mean, look, dog. And I, I uh, defended him on several occasions from other pieces of shit that were coming for his wig, but didn't do anything themselves. To add or, or, you know, to the community and shit or bring any clarity to the situation. Okay, you had a bunch of ignoramuses out there, you know, headhunting this guy and shit. And I said, hey, let's give the guy a chance. All right, let's give the guy a chance and shit. This guy's out here batting for the people and shit, okay? He's an activist. All right, he believes in black empowerment and all that bullshit. Okay? Now, I don't... It's not that I, I, I don't feel that he, he feels that way on some level to, you know... You know, I'm I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying, you know, some people are just about the bag. All right, some people are just about the bag. This property supposedly costs uh, one million eight hundred sixty-five thousand uh, dollars. It's a one-story. It's a sizable space, but it doesn't. You know, you know, it's not like you know. People thought that they were going to get the concept art. I knew you weren't going to get the concept art and shit, but I wanted something. You know, something interesting and shit. I mean, we got a storefront. We got a fucking storefront, man. Okay? And we got, like, shit just hanging up on the walls. All right? So, you know, I, I said, hey. You know, I told a lot of those detractors that I was just going to sit my ass down and sit in the catbird seat and just take a look at shit, okay? Because I thought it was weird. <clears throat> just like when Umar did his thing and shit. You know, I thought it was weird to announce that shit publicly when you didn't have the property in hand and shit, okay? And then Umar promptly fucked up by... Uh, you know, tricking off his money with a, with a uh, exotic dancer and shit, okay? And supposedly losing uh, an endorsement while spending the money he already had and shit, and he has nothing to show for it, and nobody's going to question him about it extensively, nor is anybody going to, like the IRS, anybody going to try to find out what's going on here, okay? I think it's bullshit, all right? Just like when I said Umar Johnson, we didn't see any uh, uh the teachers or the faculty or staff he didn't tell us who, that he had a grant writer or anything. The same with Mr. Nasheed here. He didn't tell us who the curator is. He didn't say who the curator is. He didn't say, who, you know, he didn't talk about that he had a grant writer or any shit like that. You know, that's not some shit you just do by yourself, like something of uh, undertaking of this, especially in Los Angeles and shit. Landlocked Los Angeles, gentrified to, to the ninth degree Los Angeles. And people tried to give him an out. They said... Why don't you put it online? Why don't you make a virtual museum? It would be a better space and whatnot. You know, he could even use that fucking metaverse shit. You know, you know the Zuckerberg's metaverse to, to assemble this fucking museum and make people to pay to go in there. You know, it would be more lucrative and shit instead of just having physical, you know, physical location that's not up to standard and shit. And you know, people are ignorant and shit. They expected you to accomplish and build the concept art. They don't understand, man. They don't understand the real estate or anything in on the West Coast. Okay? You know, a shitty little one-story house almost cost a million dollars over there. Oh, okay? And that's before I even left, like a couple years ago. All right? And here you have this shit. So, you know, you know, ridicule be damned. Okay? I'll let, I'll let it go. Okay? I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it rip, man. Open them fucking gates, man. Come on in. You know, everybody but Bucci Bear. You know, he, him and that Tahaka Bay nigga, they need to take three steps back and, and start moonwalking and shit because they're out of pocket and shit. Just leave this nigga alone. All right? All my life, all my life I've been questioning these goddamn, um, you know, uh, poverty pimps and shit. You know, these uh, fake activists and shit. These people that will try to set themselves amongst the people. I will... Show you the way to the promised land, all that bullshit. I, I have always had a dis discernment about this shit. Okay, all right. And I want to let you know. Okay, you know some of y'all probably might say fuck me or something. It's okay. It's okay. I don't lie to my viewers and my subscribers, the people that come to this goddamn video to hear what I have to say. I don't lie about that shit. Okay. I was kicked out of uh, the. I was kicked out of the Final Call building in Chicago, you know, the home of the <laughs> the Farrakhan's uh, power base and shit at the time on the south side. It wasn't a mosque, okay? Well, yeah, I guess the service is a mosque. It's called the Final Call building. It's a converted funeral home and shit on another block over. He has a restaurant that has been shuttered for a minute and probably not due to the pandemic either. Uh, but, um, yeah, I was kicked out of there. 
for asking too many questions. Okay, just regular questions. I was a high school student when I got booted out of there. They they didn't. I didn't have to return. They told my older sibling who was working there, "Oh, don't bring him back." Why not? And I got asked for that because I was in a, a reading circle, and I asked about Yaku, you know, and I asked about some of the shit, some of the literature. I just asked some regular questions, and they told me, uh, hey, it's cool, why don't you go chill out? And I got to go watch uh, uh, Farrakhan give a sermon and shit from the balcony. It was weird. It's the exact same setup, you know, in that building as, you know, the setup when Malcolm got shot and shit. So I was like, man, they didn't learn shit, you know. They wasn't worried about shit. It was the weirdest thing. I don't want to go into that right now. So I know somebody going to hate on me and shit because a lot of you people in the community, you can't see the forest for the trees. You just you just got a program. Oh, this this guy is the golden nigga and shit. It's the chicken George argument and shit. You know, back in the day, the slave masters used to give one Negro, one coon, like a hat with a feather in it. And they told him that made he was the boss of the other niggas and shit. And then he would go tell them niggas he was their boss and shit. A lot of ten times out of. 10, uh, he would end up, you know, getting taken out and shit, and then the other nigga would put the hat on his head. Now I'm looking at the chicken feather in the hat, and Tariq and the sheet wearing that shit, okay? All right? I ain't got nothing else really to say, man. I'm gonna call you down, man. It's a poverty pill. This is what we get? Some bullshit? You know, it's another, you know, I'm looking at the fucking premiere. There's people milling about there, looking around and shit, but it just looks flat and fucked up. And then I found like a, a fucking, um, I found like a, 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 you know, he was looking, I, I wanted that. He was looking for somebody to, he was looking for an interior designer for this space. And I'm like, man, you don't have your shit together. You don't have your shit together. You, after you, you, you acquire the space and everything, you look for an interior designer. It doesn't talk about pay or anything. You're probably going to try to get that pro bono from somebody. It ain't happening. Don't do anything for free. Okay. I don't think I need to tell people that bit of advice you know if you're good at something never do it for free even if you're bad at it don't do nothing for free get your money because people finesse man you know california and los angeles that like the finesse game is strong there okay you know i'm not denying Tariq the but this is some bullshit and we ain't gonna hear nobody else talking about this you know in his little group there you know that group that he belongs to you ain't gonna hear nothing of them talking about this shit or talking about the fact that he used that he announced it publicly so that he could uh, purposely fail and have an out. All right? So, you know, the pressure got, they turned up the, the fire under his ass, made him start tap dancing, book dancing, and he got this space and shit, a fucking storefront. All right? And, he, you know, now you got, you go in there and it looks like just, uh, you know, shit hanging on the wall. You know? And then he had like, a, you know, the premiere and shit. It was just the usual bullshit, like some fake red carpet bullshit or, you know, like a fucking, um, you know, like shit on the wall. I could have done that shit. I could have done that shit. And in L.A., I'll tell you, for the shit he did, whatnot, I would tell him, give me about $10,000 to do the same shit that's already in there, just on general principle alone. Just for the annoyance, for the bullshit. I'm tired of these goddamn poverty pimps. Good people deserve to have their faith rewarded. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Okay, I don't want no fucking non-foundational people over here bullshitting around in my comment section. Just make your videos, make your motherfucking videos on your fucking channel, okay? I'm going to drag them myself, all right? <laughs> Man, the finesse game is real. I would never, probably never call this guy up and try to talk to this guy because he would clown me the minute that I asked him a direct question about any of the shit he was doing. And that goes for this fucking um, American Maroon movie or whatever. When I when I saw the trailer for that shit, as a <laughs> let I I, I want to get into it, but like I was in, you know, I study film and I you know art and film and you know I'll leave it at that. I don't want to go any further. But I knew I was looking at something that was, you know, made like it looked like a student a bad student film. You know, just from the trailer, I haven't seen the movie. Made a movie is some, some great shit, okay? There was no big money putting that movie and shit, okay? And I'm just saying, you know, this guy's about his, his uh, money game, okay? He's all about the bag, you know? You keep that in mind. All right? I, I hate to call somebody a false prophet and shit. I really would. I really hate doing that. We have a proliferation of them. When I see shit like this, it makes me so fucking angry and shit. 
It makes me so fucking angry. I feel like, you know, there's an old movie called Cotton Comes to Harlem and shit. And in that movie, a false prophet is, you know, fucking around, you know, dicking around in the neighborhood. And eventually a black police officer confronts the fake uh, messiah. And, you know, it's just the weirdest thing because he tells him that, you know, besides him going to jail for being a fraud and shit and running money laundering and doing all kind of criminal activities, besides that, that he he's disgusted with him personally as a human being for doing this to his own goddamn people. And he proceeds to slap this guy, this guy played by Calvin Lockhart. He proceeds to slap him around. And then the guy cries like a bitch. And eventually his girlfriend shows up because he's a really a pookie. You know, he's a, a one percenter in the in the ghetto. Uh, the black chick shows up with a gun and tries to shoot the cop and gets taken down and shit. And, and then the guy just gets publicly excoriated and shit. I would like this for Mr. Machine and shit. I would like him to see a similar fate getting slapped up and shit for this bullshit, okay? For this bullshit, even if you was a, a poverty pimp. You know, some people said that, you know, back in the day, controversially speaking and shit, some people said uh, MLK was, you know, you know, boule and, you know, you know, he was a gatekeeper and all that shit. And at some point he realized that, you know, it was all bullshit and that he had to do something for his people. And he ended up getting assassinated and shit. We'll never know. I don't want to fucking know at this point and shit because in my heart of hearts, when I see shit like this, I wish to high hell. I wish, I wish that MLK could have got out of the game, you know, got out of it and went home to his family and children and raised them. Okay, I wish somehow he could have avoided being, you know, the assassination and went home. We know white supremacy always breaks the toys and everything. Okay? We know that. But, like, I really, you know, when I see shit like this, it makes me so sad, man. Because w before Martin Luther King died, he told all of the people in his group, you know, his staff and everything, including Jesse Jackson, he told them that what not to do. And then after he was killed, they all did the shit he told them not to do. And we have what we have today and shit, you know. We have the Hidden History Museum. <laughs> We have the Hidden History fucking museum, all right? All right? I feel bad for our people, okay? I feel bad for our people and shit because good people do deserve to have the faith rewarded. This ain't gonna get us nowhere. Hey, man. Man, get this there's eighty-seven thousand dollars in that bill. Fifty-fifty, right down the middle. When you steal money from white folks, that's your business. But when you steal from blacks, that's my business. You sound just like my <laughs> part preacher, part undertaker. Oh, God. Why don't you take it easy, man? Cool it. What's the matter with you? Now, black people been exploded by white people. Felt like you come along. Skin them some more. Judgment, Deke. Judgment. All right, man. All right. You? You keep the whole thing. I'll walk out of here, and I promise you, I'll never show my face in Harlem again as long as I live. Well, that's what you want, ain't it? No. I want you. Ed! Ed, listen. For God's sake, give me a chance. I could be another... another Garvey man, another Malcolm. Shoot him 
stop you. I won't. I won't. God damn it! Hey, wait a minute. Oh, what's up, preacher? Brothers, sisters, he's still here. Wanna beat me to death? Wanna beat me, Dico Malley? No, no, listen. Listen, I. Listen, I. I could, I could. Listen to me! I got something to tell you! Listen, no, no, no! No, no, no! No, don't, don't turn your backs! Don't, listen to me! Don't turn your backs on me! No, no, listen! Listen to me! Listen! Oh, I can be like Malcolm! Believe me! Don't turn your backs on me! Don't turn!